toy fans, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick here, back with another installment on the Spectra Creative channel, taking an inside look at the toy industry. My last video was about kind of the role of marketing and how to get into marketing in toys, and I wanted to kind of continue that by looking at design and how to get into the idea of designing toys, if that's what you want to do. Uh, it's really not exactly a straight path. There's multiple ways to get into this. But I know as a lot of us are collectors out there, myself included, have a passion for toys that can kind of take over our whole life, and that can bleed over into a career in the toy industry. One thing I will tell you is the toy industry is constantly looking for the next big hit. It's not like other consumer goods like toothpaste or mac and cheese where they just offer the same thing every year. With the toy industry, there is a constant need for new which means the toy industry is constantly looking for new talented designers. And it doesn't just mean sculptors, and it doesn't just mean people who know how to put you know, two and two together. There's a lot of different aspects to toy design. So that's what we're going to do in this video, is talk a little bit about how to get into the actual physical nature of toy design. So I have quite a few friends that are toy designers. Bill Benicke, as an example, was the partner that I worked with at Mattel for a good chunk when I was the brand manager on the DC Universe and Masters of the Universe Classics line. Bill is definitely also a toy fan and a pop culture fan, which definitely gives him that passion that has really pushed his career forward. When you have that passion, when you're a toy designer, it definitely makes all the difference between just sort of being an industrial designer. You also have to have talent, and that's number, I mean, you know, no matter how passionate you are, obviously you have to have talent, but the great thing is talent can be learned, it can be acquired, and the best way to do this is really to go to school. There are several schools that offer programs in both toy design as well as industrial design. It doesn't necessarily matter if your schooling or your education is specifically in toy design, but... Schools that have just general design programs, as well as industrial design, the concept of learning how products fit, get built, basically, and fit together and are made. Because at the end of the day, toys are consumer products. I mean, yes, we all love them as collectibles or playthings, but you know, at the end of the assembly line, they're just another product. In a way, you know, no different than a VCR or a salt shaker, you know, things have to fit together and screw on and work. So these programs, and you can easily Google, you know, schools with art programs, schools with toy design programs to get a list and look at ones locally in your area. You're going to learn a ton, not just about toys, especially if, you know, if it's a, specifically a toy design program, but you're going to learn about engineering and how products, you know, like the internal pieces, the wheels, the gears, work so that you either see or don't see them in the final product and how the mechanical aspect of that works. For example, things like this, which are called an exploded drawing, meaning you've taken the product and exploded it out to see every working part, these are the kind of things you're going to study. And you're going to learn how visually you can, you can put this together both in illustration form and in computer form, in you know, using um, computer illustrations and, and using CGI, which is a lot what the toy industry does with a lot of digital sculpting these days, where files like this can go right to a vendor. You'll learn the whole process from you know a sketch to a 3D model to a physical sculpt to a painted model that's then ready to go into production. You'll also learn a lot about sculpting from real life, being able to look at something and turn it into a sculpt, being able to you know, turn it into a physical 3D representation of what you're looking at. This obviously takes talent, but it is talent that can be learned. I had the privilege of guest lecturing at a couple classes in Southern California, and one of the classes that I was guest lecturing on they were looking at how they could recreate IP characters. So they, they were specifically, I, think, I can't remember if they are doing Mickey Mouse, or they might have been doing Winnie the Pooh. I know it was a Disney character. I'm using Mickey in my example. So what they, they were all given the same Mickey Mouse 
product, like a finished sculpture of Mickey. And their goal in that class was to learn how to sculpt Mickey on model, meaning being able to sculpt him so he looks exactly like the IP is supposed to. And it's not as easy as you think, because things like the size of his ears, or his eyes, or his nose, the shape of his face, little things can throw a sculpt off model, as they call it. Like this example here is not 100% on model. It's close, but it's not good enough. The ears are too small, the nose is too big. It's, it's a skill to learn, and this was something that the class was doing that uh, I, was I was visiting with. After graduation, you're going to put together your graphic design portfolio, showing off all of your skill sets. And it's best to show this across multiple different disciplines, all the different things you can do. And if you're trying to get into toy design, specifically action figure design, it's a great idea to take an existing sort of current toy line and maybe do like a different character that hasn't been offered yet and show how you would break that out as a toy. You know, everything from the colors to the sculpt to, if you will, an exploded drawing there on the top. As well as show a, a toy that sort of could exist within, uh, you know, a, a mainstream release, like a movie release, and something you might create that would work well in that lineup. As well as new interpretations of existing product. Because again, the toy industry is constantly looking for new ways to reimagine even existing toys and coming up with ways that you would reimagine um, something you know, that's already at market is a great thing to, to put in your portfolio. As well as, again, you know, that exploded view that I mentioned earlier, being able to show that with toys, it really shows you understand the engineering. Because design is about both creation and engineering. Now, as far as getting a job, I mean, you know, things like Mattel or Hasbro are constantly, you know, I mean, this is just from Indeed, but you can also go to conventions. That's actually how I got my job at Mattel, was going up to someone at Mattel at the Comic-Con booth, but I had my portfolio with me. I wasn't a toy designer, I was a writer, but I had my professional portfolio, which is how I stood out. And of course, if you have colleagues or friends working for a toy company, that's great because networking is all what it's about. It's about who you know, not necessarily what you know. Now, another route you can take is the inventor route. So again, large companies like Mattel and like Hasbro, like Hasbro and Hasbro, they both have inventor relation portals. So here's Hasbro's, which is called Hasbro Spark. And, I mean, you can find them right on their websites if you go to, you know, Mattel.com, Hasbro.com, and you'll see they have forms for submitting toy concepts directly to companies. You can also go through agents. There's lots of people out there that do inventor relations for the toy industry. And this is a whole other route you can go as opposed to getting employed by a company. You can submit ideas, and if the idea is you know, good enough and the company likes it, you basically get paid a royalty every time you know that toy is sold, and it's you know another way to have income from toy creation. So there's not one path. Whether you want to work for a toy company, you want to be an inventor. It definitely starts with kind of either a formal education in toy design, industrial design, and having talent. But above having the knowledge and the talent, which can be developed in a formal program. And again, there are programs all over the country in industrial design, toy design, graphic design. You have to have that passion. And passion will get you everywhere in the toy industry. Because honestly, as shocking as it might be, so many people who work in the toy industry are just there to get the job done. But the few of us, or the few people that really have a passion for toys, and it just comes through, that you just love toys, that's how you succeed. I hope this video shed some light on the design process and how one might start off to get a job as a toy designer. If there's anything I left out or you want to know more, leave it in the comments below. I'd love a subscription and a like, and uh, I'll see you guys around the internet with more videos to come.